video is for section 7.3, which is about binomial radical expressions. But before we work on actual binomial radical expressions, I just wanted to review a few of the rules that we should already know about radicals. So first, how do we add radical expressions? So for my example, let's start with the mth root of x, and I would like to add that with something else. Now, if I'm going to combine it with another radical, it has to have the same index and the same radicand. So I'm going to add it with another mth root of x. So since I'm adding two of the same things together, we're going to get two mth root of x. Okay, so since we can only add things that have the same radicand, we have to be able to, to test, or at least, you know, to figure out if things do have the same radicand, even when it appears at first that they don't. So here's my first example. Let's do 6 root 18 plus 4 root 8 minus 3 root 72. And I know I've said it before in class, you know, I'm not too much of a stickler for uh, reducing things inside the radical, except when it makes sense to. And this would be a good situation to think about that. So I'd like to add or subtract these expressions. And right now, they have different radicands. So I want to see if I can reduce it and uh, get them to have the same radicand. So let's see. Root 18, I could split that into root 9 times root 2. And the root of 9 is 3. So here we have 6 times 3 times root 2, which would get us 18 root 2. Now let's move on to the root 4 root 8. Root 8 can break down into the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. And we know that the square root of 4 is 2. So here we have 4 times 2 times root 2. So if I just simplify that, I get 8 root 2. And for the square root of 72, I could break that into the square root of 36 times the square root of 2. And that would be really 6. So I'm going to multiply 3 and 6. So I'm going to get minus 18, and that's multiplied by root 2. So what appeared to not have the same radicand actually did once we simplified it. So these all have the same radicand. Now we can combine them. So we have positive 18 root 2, and we have a negative 18 root 2, so those are going to cancel. And I will be left with 8 root 2. Okay, so like I said, that was just a little bit of a review. Now moving on to what we could do with binomial radical expressions. So I think what is probably the most interesting thing would be uh, multiplication. So let's try some multiplication. Okay, and let me make a binomial that has some radicals. So how about 3 plus root 5? And let's multiply that with 4 minus root 2. Okay, so we're still going to multiply this just as we would um, any binomials. I'm going to do 3 times 4, so we get 12, and 3 times negative root 2, so I get 3 root 2. And let's see, 4 times root 5, so plus 4 root 5. And now I have to multiply root 5 and root 2. And remember, you're allowed to multiply things that have different radicands, but they do have to have the same index, and in this case they do. So we have minus the square root of 10. Now let's just take a quick look here. Can we combine any of these things? I have an integer. 
I have a square root of 2, I have a square root of 5, and a square root of 10. Those can't be simplified, so I think I am done with this problem. Okay, so I have one more example I want to show you. What if we multiplied 3 plus root 5 with its conjugate, which would be 3 minus root 5? Let's try this problem. We would get 9 minus 3 root 5 plus 3 root 5 minus the square root of 25. So on this example, we actually can take the square root of 25, which we should know to be 5, and now I have two integers which I can combine. So I have 4, and the negative 3 root 5 and the positive 3 root 5, they're going to cancel. So I'm left with a rational answer. So remember, we talked about how conjugates can have, you know, pretty nice outcomes when we, we do things like multiplying them. And here is another example of that. So that's going to come in handy when I teach you how to rationalize some more complicated uh, radical expressions. Let's start off with an easy one. Let's practice some rationalizing. Uh, what about 1 over the square root of 2? We should all know how to do this problem, hopefully from maybe geometry. So since we want to get rid of having a radical in this denominator, we want to have something that would cancel out the square root. So we talked about how the inverse of a square root would be to square something. So if I multiplied that with another square root of 2, that would really be the square root of 2 squared. So now we have the square and the square root, which are inverses. So they're going to cancel each other out, and we'll just be left with a 2 in the denominator. But remember, we can't just multiply the denom denominator by a number that would change the whole value of that expression. So we really want to multiply it by something that won't change its value, and that would be 1. So I'm going to multiply the numerator by root 2 as well. That would get me root 2. And now I have a radical in the numerator, but I don't want to have one in the denominator. So I can leave my answer just like that. Okay. Let's try another one more of an Algebra 2 example. What if I had 1 over the cube root of 2? So we need to get rid of a cube root. So the inverse of a cube root would be to cube. So if I multiplied by the cube root of 2, this would only get me the cube root of 2 squared, right? And the cube root and the square, they're not inverse operations. So it's actually not good enough. But if I multiplied this by the cube root of 2 squared, then when I multiplied them, I'd get the cube root of 2 cubed, which are inverses. And you would just get a 2 in the denominator, right? So you could either write it as cube root of 2 squared, which would also be the same thing as the cube root of 4, right? Just so I know, this is still all this, you know, the same thing as 1. And I would get a cube root of 4 in my numerator. And once again, this is rationalized. Okay. I have one more type of example that I want to make sure that you see. And that's if you have a binomial radical in the denominator. So let's do 1 over 1 plus root 2. So... If you multiplied this denominator by root 2, you would get root 2 plus 2. So you really you wouldn't get rid of any radical. You would just kind of cause it to, to move to a different place. So that's not going to work. So I'm going to bring your attention back up to the example up here where we yeah. talked about multiplying binomial radicals that were conjugates. And remember what happened? those irrational terms in the middle there, they canceled out. 
So I'm going to multiply this denominator by its conjugate, which would be 1 minus root 2. And let's see what happens. We get 1 minus root 2 plus root 2 minus 2. Like I said, those radicals are going to cancel. I wind up with a 1 minus 2, which is negative 1. Okay, so that's good news for us. Now let's just take care of the numerator. We're going to multiply by the same thing in the numerator, so 1 minus root 2, which you get plus 1 minus root 2. And I probably would simplify this. It's kind of strange to leave something with a negative 1 in a denominator. So I'm just going to divide everything in the top by negative 1, which would turn the 1 to a negative 1 and this negative root 2 to a positive root 2. So most people would write that as root 2 minus 1. Okay. So I'm going to do just one more quick example here, make sure we're okay with this. What if we had 3 plus root 2 over 4 minus root 5? So we would multiply once again by the conjugate of the denominator, so we have 4 plus root 5, right? And I want to do that to both the numerator and denominator. So here we go. I'm going to multiply the numerator first on this one. You would get 12 plus 3 root 5 plus 4 root 2 plus root 10. And in the denominator, we would get 16. I'm not going to write those two middle terms. I know they're going to cross out minus 5. Let's see if we can simplify this at all. In the numerator, nothing has the same radicand, so unfortunately we're going to have four terms in this expression. And in our denominator, we're going to have an 11. So at least it's rationalized. One more quick note I just want to point out. Realize that 4 minus root 5 and 4 plus root 5 are conjugates. So the reason that the radicals will cancel is that the radicals have opposite signs, right? So if I was given something like this, let me just squeeze it in here, 3 plus root 2 over root 5 minus 4, it wouldn't be smart to multiply that by root 5 plus 4. That's not going to cancel out the con it's not going to um, cancel out that radical. I would multiply this by negative root 5 minus 4 over negative root 5 minus 4. Okay, and I'm not going to worry about that. You can figure that on your own, but I thought that might be something that might be helpful later on.